Problem 4, find the maximum value of the tensile load T that may be applied based on the bolt's shear strength. First, we need to get the nominal shear strength of the bolts used in the problem. So according to the problem, the property of the bolts is A490N. Okay, A490, that corresponds to the group of the bolts. And then the letter N stands for threads not excluded. So N stands for not excluded. Therefore, the bolts that we are looking for is A490 and threads not excluded. So here it is. And the corresponding F sub NV is 469 MPa. We can now compute the nominal shear strength of one bolt. Okay, let's say we analyze the upper plate. Upon analyzing the upper plate, we can observe that the bolts are subjected to single shear. So meaning only one area of the bolt is resisting the force. Okay, so let us solve. That is F sub NV times the area of the bolt. We have F sub NV is 469. And then the area of the bolt is pi over 4 times 24 squared. Okay, so we can now solve for the nominal shear strength of one bolt. Nominal shear strength of one bolt is 212-170.615 Newton. Okay, to get the allowable shear strength of one bolt, so we divide this by the factor of safety. So I've already used the value in kilonewton. I have divided the Rn by 1000. So divide this by 2, we now have the allowable shear strength of 1 bolt, and that is 106.085. So this is now the allowable shear strength of 1 bolt. So now we will compare the demand and the capacity. So the demand in the plate is T, and then our capacity, we have to multiply the 106 kilonewton by 9 because all in all we have a total of 9 volts. And that is 954.77 kilonewton. So meaning the value of T should not be greater than 954 so that the bolts will not fail in shear. Therefore, the answer is letter A. Problem 5, find the maximum value of the tensile load T that may be applied based on the bolts bearing on the plate. Okay, let's say we analyze again the upper plate and then we label the bolts. So let's say this is bolt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When checking the bolts for bearing, it is simultaneously checked with tear out. So the formula used for varying deformation, R sub N is 2.4 DTFU, and then for tear out, that is 1.2 LCT times FU. So as you can see, both 1, 2, and 3 will have the same strength because they have the same edge distance from the edge of the plate. We just get the minimum of the bearing, the formation, and tear out. So the Rn for bolts 1, 2, and 3, that is the minimum of 2.4 dt Fu and 1.2 LCT Fu. Okay, so as we apply load to the right, the tendency of failure is towards this part. So meaning this part of the plate will crash against the bolt or will be teared out. So we have 2.4 of 24 times 25 times 400. And then we compare that to 1.2 LC. So by the way, the LC to be considered is this one because this is the direction where in the plate will be teared out. So to solve for LC, that is 
F1 minus half of the hole. Take note that the diameter of the hole is 27. And we do not need to add another 2 millimeter because we are not computing for net area. F1 is given as 50 minus 1 half of 27. Therefore, this is 36.5 millimeters. Okay? So now let us compute the Rn for both 1, 2, and 3. So we can also hope for 2.4 dTFU. So 2.4 times D times P times FU. That is 576,000. Convert it already to kilonewton. So divide by 1,000. And then next is 1.2 LC T times FU. And that is 438,000. So we divide it by 1,000 to obtain the value in kilonewton. Okay, so the minimum of the two is 438 kilonewton. Therefore, this is the bearing strength for bolts 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so by the way, we have a technique or a way in order to determine which among the two will govern already. So if you're going to equate the 2.4 DTFU and 1.2 LCTFU, the tear out formula or the tear out nominal strength will not govern if the expression is greater than 2.4 DTFU. Okay, so if we're going to simplify this one, Take note that TFU will be cancelled and L sub C will be left on the left part if we divide both sides of the inequality by 1.2. So we will obtain L sub C greater than 2D. So take note, tear out will be greater than the capacity in bearing deformation if L sub C is greater than 2D. So meaning, we just have to check if L sub C is greater than D. Like in this case, the value of L sub C is 36.5 and then twice of the D is 48. So as you can see, 36.5 is not greater than 48 millimeters. So meaning, the tear out formula will govern. Okay? So for both 1, 2, and 3, the nominal strength is 438. And then we continue. For bolts 4 up to 9, so the LC will be this one. This will become the LC because this is the direction where in the plate will be turned out once we have applied a load of T to the right. Okay, so they have the same LC because the spacing is the same. So we can compute for L sub C. That is S2, which is 75 minus one half of the hole from the left and right or from each side. So all in all, we are like subtracting one complete hole. So that is 48 millimeter. So to identify which among the bearing and tear out will govern. So let us compare LC to 2D. Our 2D is 48. And then L sub C is also 48. So if that is the case, they will have the same value because L sub C is equal to 2D. So the capacity for bearing deformation and tear out will just be the same. So meaning either of the two formula can be used.